everybody, this is Paul Gilbert. I'm a guitar player and a hobbyist drummer, and I have the great honor of playing in a band every night with Nick D. Virgilio, a professional drummer. We're gonna talk about drum gear on the road. I know it took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to discover that you have to work with backline when you're on the road sometimes. And that is the case here, is not is it not? It is. Uh, can I first say thank you, Paul, for being willing to uh, interview me? I, I love drums, so this is this is awesome. <laughs> but my my question is, when did you discover how backline works on a professional tour? I've been, well, many years ago, because uh, it's you know it's it's very rare, and it was only when I was in Tears to Fears in the '90s was I able to carry my drums around the world in big old touring trunks. They shipped them by plane overseas and all that kind of stuff. That was the only tour I've ever done where I had my own gear everywhere we went. So what's step one otherwise? You're at home, you, you got the tour, Right. who do you call, who do you email? Well, usually it's the tour manager and the team that's working for the band that will figure out where to get the drums. I do go through the drum companies, like the folks at DW really knew who to talk to here in Southeast Asia because they have distributors and backline companies they work for, work with a lot. So it was pretty easy for them to send out emails, tell them I'm coming, give them sort of my specs and see what they had in stock. So if you're an up and coming drummer, and you know that tours are in your future, and you're deciding, well, wow, I kind of want to work with this company or that company. Yeah. What are what are like the big companies that come to mind that are common for backline touring around the world? DW, like this. Pearl is pretty widely, it's just all over the world. And then pretty much everybody else. Ta I mean, Tama is around a lot. Um, you, you'll find Sonar and other, the other big companies, but DW and Pearl seem to have gear everywhere you go. And it's not always going to be the exact same kit. It might not be the same model, but you get roughly what you're going to need to get the job done. And that leads us to what do you need to get the job done? This, you're looking at it. So this is like my normal setup at home, just a different model of DW drums. Now I asked for maple drums for this tour. So every kit's been at some sort of DW collector's maple of some sort, older or newer. This is a DW, this is a uh, custom maple standard. It means it has re-rings on the top and bottom, but it's just a pure maple shell. And I've had some newer kits and some older kits. This kit seems to be a little bit older, but it looks really cool with the gold sparkle. I like the gold sparkle. And it's the right size, 10, 12, 14, 16, 22 inch kick drum. They gave me a black nickel over brass, 14 by six and a half snare drum. So all the all the right sizes for me to do the gig. There was been a couple of gigs, I think it was Taipei, where I got a great DW kit, but I had longer toms. Oh. So I had to raise up the stuff <laughs> a little bit. So usually, you know, you might have to tweak a little bit here and there with the back line, but so far DW has had great gear everywhere I've gone. Do you bring your own cymbals or are those backline as well? No, I brought, you can bring, you can use backline cymbals, but I chose to bring my own cymbal just so I know that, because. Symbols are very important for this band, in my opinion. The crashes are there a lot. A lot of nuance in the high end with cymbal stuff, so I brought my Sabians. A great smattering all the way around. Uh, bigger cymbals, a nice variety of crashes, a great ride. A stack here for a little bit of noise, a couple of great chinas. So yeah, I brought my cymbals. And I brought my own kick drum pedal. Ah. Yeah, that to me is one of the most, you have to, you're obviously gonna bring your own sticks because that's your tool. But I think that pedal is probably the next most important thing for a drummer to bring and to have, even if you don't bring cymbals. At least you know the feel of your pedal everywhere you're gonna go. Yeah. It'll always feel the same with the pedal. And to me, that's really important. So I have, it's not a DW, it's an old Pearl Eliminator pedal that I've had for probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years. I put my own bearings in it and stuff, and DW makes awesome pedals. But this one, I just it feels like an old pair of shoes. I knew it's gonna be every night, it's gonna perform, and I just wanted to have that, that kind of security blanket while I was traveling. Yeah. Does it, how do you pack it? Do you have a, a, a certain, is there a case that comes with it or do you have to get like a special case made? I just have like a Pelican style uh, gator case, um, you know, hard shell case, and it just goes in there with a bunch of other bits and bobs. We brought some extra hardware, some boom arms, these things called dog ears. I brought my own cowbell, tambourine, and a few of those other things. These awesome dampeners called snare weights. These things rock. I'll definitely pump these guys up. Great product. Now, I'm gonna stop you there for a second yeah. because I have noticed that you have solved, before it was ever a problem, one of the biggest issues that I've experienced with drummers in a live situation. Okay. That is, everything sounds great at sound check until the, the band starts playing, right. and then the floor toms start going and they like start just resonating out of control because of, like the bass guitar will hit it, right. and it'll just set it off. And same thing, like acoustic guitars do that as well. Sure. It's, it's been like a non-issue. You Is that why? Snare weights do an amazing job. They really do. Um, I'm using double ply heads, these EC2s. 
from Evans, which help, a little thicker head, but the snare weights just, they don't take away all the attack, they just take away some of that sustain, some of that ringing, because sometimes these shells are so pure, the edges are so cut sharp that the drum will ring on its own for days. Then you give it a low end tone yeah. and it'll really take off. So the snare weight is an awesome little thing. So those are for the, the top head. Right. What about the bottom head? Is there anything you have to do to Just that? Just tuning. Jose, who's holding the camera right here, is tuning the drums in a great way. I brought cotton balls. Sometimes I put cotton inside the drum, which really helps to take away some of that sustain if it's too much. Every drum's a little bit different, so you gotta kind of see what you have to work with first. You just put them in there and they're loose? No, what you do is you take like maybe two or three. The, the bigger the drum, the more cotton. Two or three, you kind of pull them apart, make a little pancake, and just stick it in the drum. So then when you hit the drum, it'll bounce off the bottom head and then land back down. And when it lands back on the head, it just, it takes away the sustain. Have you done that on the tour at all? Or have you needed I haven't needed it on these, on these drums so far, yeah. so yeah. Now, I noticed you have an extra snare that looks to be just like a, an, an accessory stand. Well, so what I'm doing, I'm going on tour with my band, Big Big Train, immediately after this yeah. tour with Bister Big. In my band, I do have a second side snare that I play, higher pitched for different sounds. As we got into rehearsals for Mr. Big, I realized I didn't really need the second snare for different sounds for this show. So it's there for- It's good for memorizing <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> it's my cheat what sheet. Are you and so yeah, holding yeah, stuff, yeah, you know. And it looks cool, it looks cool from an audience perspective. But that's yeah, that's just a, it's just an extra, sort of like a table for this particular gig. Now you mentioned to me earlier that as you've had the different kits in the different cities, yeah. which is how many? Well, what did we have? We had China, we had Japan, all three Japan shows were the same kit. So we had China, Japan, then we had uh, Korea, Hong Kong, Taipei, Bangkok, uh, Singapore. Manila, Singapore, uh, Jakarta, so, and then tonight, 10, yeah. 10 different drum kits. That's that's amazing. So you, I asked you like what the differences were, and the, I think the thing that I remember you said was the hi-hat stand. Yeah, the hardware is the hardest part. The drums seem to be okay, but the hi-hat stands have been old, sometimes new, sometimes really used, sometimes not so used. So that's been uh, maybe a little bit of an issue. Sometimes they've just been bouncing like crazy. You're trying to keep time so, with the hi-hat and the things going back and forth like this. So what, what, are the, what are the first three things you do for a bouncy hi-hat? Make sure the rods at the bottom, because they have like these rods that stick in. They're supposed to make it so the, the, the stand doesn't move forward. Sometimes you push them too far down, it pushes up the, the plate. Oh. And that'll make, the, it, it'll make it not sturdy in, on the tripod. Sometimes it's the riser bouncing <laughs> around, yeah. Sometimes it's the earth. Yeah, exactly, moving There's around a, you, <laughs> exactly. There's some adjustments, but yeah, you, know, you also you're a, you're, a, you're a professional, so you rise above it. Yeah, you play no matter what. You also sing. You've got a uh, you've got a, a, is any special things to, for that make that stand work? Well, I just I bring a gooseneck. I have a Telefunken M81. Short it looks body. like it could cut down. It's a short body microphone. Uh, with I get I bring the 90 degree uh, cable just so I have less on the back end. Yeah, I have more room for my hands to move. So yeah, I bring that with me, and then you know I know it's my lips that touch the mic all the time. And so we're not just kind of sharing all that stuff. Uh, the stands come with every venue. So it's, it's, I just bring the cable, the gooseneck, and the mic. Is there anything special about the sticks? These are my own personal sticks. They're as special as they could ever be. Yeah. Now, these aren't the final version, but Promark made me a Nick DiVirgilio stick. I actually designed the, the diameter and the length and oh, the tip yeah, and the awesome. shoulder and the taper. I've never had my own stick in my life. So uh, these are like the prototypes. They're gonna be ready pretty soon. You can get them at Sweetwater. So yeah, they have my little signature and they're my own stick. So yeah, I brought my own very own sticks. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now I, I do have one, this is, you know, I'm of course a guitar player. So there's some right. stuff that all the drummers know that I don't. Why is this has the, like the hammered texture and right. then this is more smooth? It just comes, it, it changes the sound and the texture of the cymbal. When they lathe, it'll be, if, if the whole cymbal was not lathe, just had the dark hammer marks, it would be a darker sound. They take all that off with the lathing, it brightens up the sound, gives it a little more life. Now this, they just they just hammer the bell, left the rest of the cymbal lathe, so you kind of get a little mixture of dark and light in the sound. And these are all very nuanced things, but yeah, yeah that's, you'll notice that these the other crashes, um, they don't have hammered bells, they might be dark, but they're not hammered, so it's just, it's all in the technique and how they make the cymbal and the sound they're looking for. And of course, this is the Mr. Big Tour. You're, you're playing, you know, you're the new one in the band. Yeah playing lots of new songs and did you have to do anything particular to the kit because of, of that i kept the kit pretty simple i mean 
I, this is my normal setup, usually. Um, maybe just maybe less cymbals, depending on what I'm doing, or that kind of thing, or one less rack tom, that kind of stuff. But I, you know, I watched a lot of the old Mr. Big videos when Pat was playing, and he had a similar setup. Sometimes just one rack tom, sometimes two, depending on like early days. He even had two kick drums back in the really early days, I think. So, you know, this is a, a typical rock drum kit, yeah. you know? And uh, yeah, so I didn't have to change too much. We, we went from rehearsing at, at, at Sweetwater right. to doing these gigs on the other side of the world. Right. Are there any dis discoveries, musical or otherwise, that, that were surprising to you or that were, or, or stood out? Not really, just, you know what just stood out is the, the consistency of you three up front. You guys, Billy and yourself, Eric, every night, just give it your all, and you're playing the parts at such a high level every night. Whether it's the, the sound isn't the greatest, or the, the audience is not exactly what we want, or the lights are too crazy, or what, whatever kind of comes to, to get in your way, you guys don't let that get in your way, and you play just rock on every night, so consistent. So I love that, and I try to, it kind of, it lifts my game. Oh, right you guys on. are playing at such a high level, I, I kind of raise, it raises my bar too. Right on. Yeah. So thank you. Right. Nick Stevenson, you rock. Thank you, sir.